Contenders, ready! Ready, Aiders! Ready! Three, two, one! The Gladiators! Hello and welcome to the Glad Pod in association with Gladiators TV. I'm David Blackmore and joining me as always is producer Paul Noddings and of course everyone's favourite gladiator Jet aka Diane Udell. Now when we launched the Glad Pod way back in 2020 I never thought the day would come when we'd be reacting to a rebooted version of gladiators on the show but that is exactly what we're doing today. It just blows my mind that we've got to this stage you know because over the years with all the gladiators we've ever interviewed some of them have been up for the show returning. A few of them have said that they'd even be up for donning the lycra again and, and others have felt it would have never happened and then even once it'd been confirmed that it was going to be shown on the BBC we've had a lot of discussion about how they're going to go about putting on a show that could possibly challenge the show that we enjoyed so much way back in the 1990s but on Saturday night I cannot tell you how excited I was to sit down and watch a show and just how delighted I was with what they did I mean clearly I wasn't the only, only one to enjoy the power of of the gladiators on Saturday night as millions of us upwards of 6.4 million people in fact tuned in I mean basically 1990s money that is upwards of 15 million people because it also had a 38% share of the audience which is gladiatorially massive I'll go on to explain more of my feelings and opinions on this latest version in a bit as we'll die plus we'll be hearing from two very special gladiatorial guests on their take on the event the gladiators the contenders and everything in between but first producer Producer Paul, I wanted to start with you. What would 10-year-old Paul have made of that show on Saturday night? Oh my God. I think it had everything for me. It was like, had all of the nostalgia. It had the humour, the action, the drama. And most importantly, I think it had the atmosphere as well. Like going back into the arena setting, I think just it just leapt through the TV screen and it was everything that I hoped it would be and more. Well, and of course, the key difference between 10-year-old Paul and today's Paul is, as I'm sure a few of you eagle-eyed Glad fans would have noticed, your name, producer Paul, is on the credits. So do you just want to explain a bit more about some of the work you've done towards this show? Yes. So yeah, that was honestly, is a pinch me, full circle, surreal moment that I don't think that I'll ever quite kind of wrap my head around. It still doesn't feel real, even though it's been on TV. But yes, I... I've been very busy aside from the Glad Pod in the world of Gladiators and I was privileged enough to design the brand new logo for the show or should I say revamped logo because they wanted to kind of capture everything of the original but just kind of enhance on it give it a bit of an upgrade basically and then it kind of spiraled and I ended up designing the individual emblems for each of the gladiators which in all of my career as a designer that was like the most pressure I have ever felt because I knew that it would be going on their costumes and re being represented throughout all of the graphics so there was many sleepless nights trying to to think of emblems and think of a style as well what would a 2024 gladiator look like and what would their emblem look like as well yeah the pressure was on to, to kind of pull that out of the bag and hopefully do it justice and I think that personally I think that they look great but very interested to kind of hear everybody else's opinions now that they're out in the wild. I completely concur Paul where did you source some of your inspiration from for each ind individual design? It was very much like with collaboration with the producers so they kind of had an image in their head of what that kind of gladiator was representing. Some of them even came with their own thoughts about what they wanted their emblem to be which was even more pressure because I had to kind of obviously do it justice for the person and what they were asking for and then some of them I had total free reign to kind of go away and kind of think what the emblem would be although at the time I didn't know who any of the gladiators were. Now Paul we've discussed a lot about about your signs and banners when you were young and you were in the audience but on Saturday I couldn't help but notice there were a few children in the audience who are clearly following in your footsteps did seeing all of those signs take you back and also presumably some of those kids were replicating some of your work the most surreal moment of everything and this is when it really kicked in for me of like wow this is amazing was on one of the shows there was a little girl in the audience and she'd hand drawn all of the gladiator emblems on the banner and honestly the hairs on my arms just stood on end and I had to go up and have a moment because I was just like wow that is like literally me age 10 with my banner with all of my drawings on there and then this little girl had done her version of my designs so yeah it was just 
just I don't think there's moments like that that you can really kind of totally appreciate until you actually experience it and it was just very surreal but amazing. What has been your reading of the reaction from not just the the GLAD community but you know the the, the general public as a whole? Uh, Do you know what from reading all of the comments from Saturday there's been an overwhelming positive feedback from everybody Uh, but the most kind of important message that I've kind of gathered from everybody is that I think everybody thought that it was going to be not very good and reading the comments online people are like oh wow this is actually pretty decent this is like how you do a remake they've not tried to strip back what the original was or tried to make it something that it wasn't. Di coming to you and we'll get into all the sort of different elements individual elements i wanted to cover but what was your overall reaction to what you were seeing on saturday night i again super excited i i'd never been in a position to actually be a spectator on gladiators other than being so in the thick of it as a glad so i had this unique experience for the first time of really really being someone sat in their living room like everybody else getting behind these new gladiators and i think paul you made a comment very early on um a while ago now about die you'll find it's true it's true to the original it's a big nod to the original production and there was something in me that thought yeah you know if it ain't broke don't fix it and that's exactly what we've got with then some do you know it, it you know you talk about functional fitness and nutrition and sports science and how far we've come with athletes So not only have we got these superhuman gladiators who are tick box on every level, the contenders, you know, it's it's geared up so much that I just think this has got legs now forever. And what I would just like to say is like, I think the thing that comes across so much with this version of gladiators is that every single person that I encountered in the production team, the gladiators, the makeup, the costume, every single person really loves cares and wanted to make this a success like everybody really kind of really got what gladiators was all about and i think that's what comes through on tv yeah i was gonna ask you paul did you actually watch it live on saturday and what was kind of going through your mind leading up to it because it would have been different to someone like myself who's you know a fan watching it because you've obviously got the added bit of that's my work going on tv as well i felt sick the whole day i was like sick with nerves and i'm like i'm not one of the gladiators i'm not a contender i'm not going out on there to get knocked off duel or smashed on the ring or something like that the show has always meant so much to me obviously with what i've done to kind of try and keep it in the public domain for so long but yeah I just felt so nervous. You just never know what the reaction is going to be from people. Now, that there would have been quite a few Glad fans, just like you, Paul, who would be able to see some of the action live and the recording live in the arena. For people who perhaps had gone to, to Birmingham previously, what was different between the filming in terms of how it all worked? Was it a much more slick operation than you can remember from Birmingham? To be honest with you, they kind of kept it very true to what it was in Birmingham, even so much as trying to film like an entire show in one kind of slot whereas with the sky version previously they got to a point where they were filming two or three shows at once and trying to not kind of put the events up and take them down just to kind of make the production a lot more quicker whereas i think what the producers on this version really wanted was for the audience to really invest in the contenders and have that whole journey with all of the events and then through to the eliminator so that when they're cheering and you've got that atmosphere they're rooting for one of those contenders because they've seen what's happened in all of the games and i think that is what comes through on the tv okay Di, Paul, we'll hear a bit more from you in a bit but i also wanted to introduce two other iconic gladiators to give their take on the reboot so we've got rebel aka jenny stout and making his glad pod debut saracen oh. aka mike lewis mike how are you good evening yeah i'm good i'm good thank you for having me on well the first question i, I know that you went to one of the filming so we'll, we'll touch on to that in a minute but just you watching the reboot booted version on Saturday night what was going through your mind what were your overall feelings towards what you were watching I obviously wasn't watching it as a fan as such I was watching it as a fellow gladiator to see how you know people perform you know how the games were played the interaction between the gladiator the contender and the audience because that's what made our show the audience made the show yeah it was fantastic I think that BBC got it right you know they they, they hit the nail on the head and you can see that everyone that was in involved were gladiator fans because they wanted it to be as it was you know they didn't add anything they didn't take anything away yes we're in the modern times so you're going to see the modern 
version of the arena. I liked all the visuals, the way they projected all the visuals on the on the wall. It was fantastic. But what I wanted to see was how the gladiators behaved. Because as gladiators, it was all new to us. It was all new to Nigel Lithgow and all these guys that came along. So we were actually given license to go out there and do whatever we wanted. If it didn't come across on TV, they just edited out. So mostly what you saw the gladiators do, we just made it up as we went along. It worked. You have times where you're walking off and the camera's following you and you will say something to the camera, but they haven't recorded it. And they will call you back. Saracen, come back. Say what you said again to the camera. And I'll be saying, what did I say? It was all made up as we went along, but it worked. That's what I was looking at to see if, you know, they were given instructions to be a particular way or whether they just acted spontaneously. So the funny thing was when they were doing that new game, Collision, and I had a thought and I thought I would have been tempted to jump on the bridge. And just as I had that, that thought Viper jumped on the bridge and I said there you go that's what makes the show little spontaneous things like that out of the blue no one's expecting it and it happens I think it took everybody by surprise even the referee you know when he said you're disqualified he probably thought what do I do here <laughs> you know and it was fantastic you can see the reaction of the crowd they and all that stuff is fantastic and that's what makes the show interesting you say that about Mike you actually watching it as a gladiator and literally almost like a checklist going through all of that Di were you the same were you watching it as a gladiator watching on and looking for bits that you know were similar to, to what you would have remembered yeah it's like Mike you cannot divorce the gladiator within that will always be even if be it you know a few decades ago so yes I was taking notes there was a part of me going oh don't be as good don't be even better please because <laughs> I've been you're right everyone had been saying before this production oh, it'll never be as good it was and then some so and I literally couldn't fault it at all I think from lighting design as Mike said I love the digital readout all the way sort of uh, like a band going across the arena of the title of each of the events as they were being played little things like that and they're just such fabulous additions and the lighting design was even better it still had the blue and the red but it was just it, it was just like it had been you know pumped up and inflated in a, in a bigger bigger way yeah it's funny Di actually because you've mentioned the lighting and the design probably in every glad Pod episode that we think <laughs> have ever done and when I was watching on Saturday I'm like Di's going to be so chuffed with this because yeah. it was so good but they brought it forward into the into the 2024 because even the countdown 3, 2, 1 all of that kind of stuff it really just I think it took it on that next level to to make it modern didn't it it did and, and where did Anga come from as well <laughs> Did you hear that, Mike, as well? One of the things, I don't know if, if they can actually hear it in the arena, but when they were doing the duel, and just before they started, you had that heartbeat. That would have freaked me out. don't know if that was added for the TV, but that worked. Because I was getting anxious when you get that heartbeat just before the go for it. I loved it. The On Guard was actually on the original show. They used to edit it out quite a lot, so I think people have just forgotten from the very first series, but John Anderson did used to say, just before duel, like, On Guard and Get Ready, the heartbeat was added in later they did do a lot more shots on the face and the eyes and they also had a drone for quite a lot of the games that they would use the drone to come in and get the shots really close up and fly in between the gladiators and stuff like that so they did some really good kind of modern technology on the original one we always had the i don't know if Di and mike you might remember the the white blimp that would go around <laughs> the top of the arena to get the shots whereas this one it's got the drones and it's a lot more slick oh i don't know how it have felt about that i don't know about you mike but we know what drones have that like real kind of ominous noise i wonder what that would like for them but in the helmets maybe they couldn't hear but i'm just wondering that would have been again quite eerie to add to the tension <laughs> the original show we were shooting on um i think we were still shooting on film it was pre-digital i mean it sounds like we are ancient well you know that's another debate altogether but they had like 12 cameras live on any one event and they'd have like lovely kind of aerial shots with some of these big cherry pickers and grains and things but it was a, literally a different era and nothing like what we saw the other night I bet they had so much fun in the what was it called the in the balcony when they're sat with all the screens on going right we're gonna have to use that that shot we're gonna have to use that angle we're gonna have to use it must have taken forever in post-production to bring each event together and that was another thing that I wanted to say from my perspective it didn't feel like an hour like it, it just had a really good pace to it basically obviously they padded some of it out with the addition of the locker room which was a, a new thing for this version we actually did something similar it was it wasn't a locker room it was backstage and we did like backstage interviews but i think 
with the editing to fit it into the hour it, it didn't work so they concentrated more on as soon as the game ended we had as Dai said a hundred cameras following you and they will do it that way how you interacted with the audience how you interacted with the contender after you beat him because we never lost and, and things like that so I think it worked I thought it, it worked brilliantly you saw the raw reaction of the gladiator celebrating a win and it was good that was great yeah I don't know what to make of the locker room bit just yet I, I, it was nice to see the camaraderie between the, the clip they played between the boys but I don't know we know what the edit in will be in the future and how much it has legs. But to see that relationship between each gladiator, because you don't get that unless you're on Gauntlet of Powerball, any of the team games, you get very little insight into that. So I'd be really interested to see where it goes. So I, I would have had you down for uh, quite liking that locker room footage, actually, because I, I really enjoyed it. It's the first thing I noticed, I was like, wow, because you, you speak so much about being in the pig pen and yeah. all of that kind of build up before, and it kind of felt like that. Although I don't know how natural they were being because presumably they would have known they were being filmed but no I get I actually you saying that now I did enjoy it I thought oh this is something a bit different this is something new this this could this could be good to see going forward but yeah I was surprised that you perhaps weren't as much of a fan as I thought you might be I think it's only because I'm, uh, in our day some of the stuff could be quite staged but as Mike said the better bits were when you were just followed post interview with Ulrika and John whoever was presenting at the time it was more organic if it gets kind of cheesy staged oh let's just have that dialogue again can you do it here and can you exit on that bit it starts becoming a little bit sort of pre-scripted or whatever but I'd, I'd, I'd imagine it wouldn't be I hope not otherwise I'll kind of go oh a bit cringe but still great fun because it's part of the panto isn't it really yeah, I feel like we've kind of addressed kind of that look and feel for the show in terms of how similar it is to the original and how it's been updated. But and Mike, just something that you were saying about watching what I start with you, Mike, first in terms of watching the gladiators, in terms of how they looked, in terms of how they presented themselves, and in terms of like what they said and what they did. What was your take on it? Do you think it was more in keeping to perhaps the originals? These guys are new; they're trying to find their character. So there was a lot of when they introduced the the, the gladiator, a lot of po- in a lot of posturing rather than I'm going to go out there and bash this guy up and then go back and have a cup of tea. So there was a lot of that going on. And during Hang Tough, I don't know if he did it before this, but I noticed on Hang Tough that Finley did a pose when he was introduced. And I thought, the contenders have got poses as well. And it, But it, it worked. It, 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 it worked because it wasn't cheesy. He was introduced and he did a pose to the camera. And I thought, look at that. We were just there. Hold it onto that ring, <laughs> waiting for the three, two, one, you know, and that was it. There was no posing. We were just all ready and geared up to go. Di, what did you make of the gladiators and how they presented themselves and introduced? Oh, amazing. I remember in the Sky production, all I'd said in a forum before was, please don't choreograph your gladiators. Let it be organic. Let them evolve their own personalities. And with this, the new gladiators now, I think there's been a lovely blend of them each being inventive, each knowing how to play to their own strengths. And that translates because I do, I do think congruency, honesty, honesty in whatever you do translates more on camera than anything. If something's choreographed for you and you're just not executing it well, it can just look bad. <laughs> and none of them, absolutely none of them on pre or post uh, event had any what I would call sort of slightly cringy moments. They just didn't. They all looked amazing. Comfortable is how they felt. Uh, they looked in front of the camera. So I felt comfortable watching them. Favourite gladiators so far, Di? It's hard to choose between all the boys at the moment because they're on a real level playing field. I love the emergence of, of Viper as a probably our new real panto baddie. He's just, he's cut out for it, isn't he? Um, and he's he's cheeky. You can see he's looking for those opportunities to kind of do something slightly diverse, which is what we want. For the girls, uh, a standout for me is Gorgeous Sabre. The camera loves her. She moves beautifully. I think she's going to be a great all-rounder. And of course, Diamond, Athena. I could go on and on uh, because obviously I'm my girls, my bad girls. I feel like I'm oh, it's like a proud mum, actually. Well, there's been a lot of talk, Di, about Diamond being the new Jet. What, what have you made about that? I'm terribly flat. 
flattered. I mean, we couldn't be farther farther apart in terms of I'm five foot five six, maybe in a bit, with long dark hair still, and certainly don't have her stature, her form, her grace and beauty. So I'm I'm terribly terribly flattered, and and I just I just think she's a star. I really do already. At the end of the gauntlet, the second run, she went up and body checked the contender. I can't see Jet doing that. I can't see Jet going up and body checking anyone. <laughs> but going back to their performances, that is what you're looking for. You're looking for a reaction. Somebody just run past you and go there. You're not going to say, oh, well done and pat them on the back. Not everybody's going to be nice like that. Some people have to have that reaction as in, you did it once and you ain't doing it again. Yeah. And I thought the way Diamond stood up there, body checked the lady and said, if you want to go again, we're ready. That's what you need. That's what jeers up the crowd. That's what gets people going. That's true. Gladiator spirit. I know Paul's really a big fan of that. And yes, they embodied that. I was more of a smiling assassin. And it was more through nerves than anything. I must admit at the time until I knew the arena was somewhere I was good at something, you know. I remember in the interviews before the new show, people were saying, what advice would you give to the new glads? And it's simply be good. Be very, very good. Because you look silly if you're not good, particularly as a glad. One or two outstanding events that become your signature events. But I believe all of these guys will be great across the board. And I'm really excited to see that. And Mike, who were your standout gladiators? Who caught your eye in this first episode? Well, as I said, Diamond, especially after when she, after the gauntlet, she did what she did. When you play games like gauntlet, it's very difficult to get airtime because there's well in this case there was four gladiators so to stand out is difficult so in the first run when Electra got up walked to the camera and said yeah you know she looked like she needed a hug so I gave her one I thought how wonderful was that because you have to no one's going to look for you you have to look for those opportunities and take them so those two stood out for me because of what they did you know they went out there Viper he took his opportunity and, and you can say he took one for the team because as I says I'm looking at it for the eyes of of a gladiator I'm looking at all the technical stuff that's going on and Finley was scoring Finley was making those guys look bad Something had to be done. And I think Viper took one for the team because it threw Finley off his track. It slowed him down. And as gladiators, that's why we're there. We're there to prevent them from scoring. So I think Viper was good. Early days, you have to wait to see how the show develops. The guy's gladiators, when, when Finley got injured, when Phantom shoved him from the second zone all the way back out to the beginning. You don't apologise. That's what you're there for. Yes, Finley got hurt. You know, I'm not being bad now. Finley got her and that is bad that is sad but phantom did what he was paid to do push the guy out fling him on the floor that's what i'm here for and then when you stand up and you think about going through that gauntlet again you're going to think twice so those were standout moments for me gladiator wise there were a few few others who do did things but like i said it was early days the new game ring you have to look for the technical because it's new you know it was a bit scrappy at times a bit sort of what we did when we were gladiators you know we used to go away and we used to think of how do we stop them scoring in the center basket and as a collective we played with that and we worked on it and you come up with a technical plan where you stand at the beginning how much space you give them all the rest of it because this is new i don't think anybody really had a plan the contenders just ran for the center the gladiators just lied on them on the floor visually it looked good but technically I found it a little scrappy because it didn't look as though anybody had a plan and the gladiators were on top. I'm talking about the guys now, not the, not the women, were on top initially and then all of a sudden the contenders started scoring and tapping that and I would have been really upset if that was against me. Let's move on to the events then because Collision was very much like a mashup of the original Hit and Run and the American Gladiators Sideswipe. So, Di, did, did you think it was better without the demolition balls in it? Yeah. Yes, I was a bit, I'd like to know what the rules were really because I would have been really inclined to do that kind of whole what I used to do and some of the other, others would do instinctively which is to scissor the legs, grab the contender with your legs because that's that's the only ammo you've got when you're hanging from a trapeze. Obviously the, the sort of sense of timing to actually you know have the target right there ready for you to do that. Would you have been allowed to scissor and drag them off? I mean, I don't know. I don't know the, the rules of that event enough. 
but I really liked it. And But I, I think I know what my strategy would have been. Something of the above of what I've just said and more, uh, definitely. I mean, were they allowed? I mean, Viper came off, didn't he? He landed on the bridge and that was a, was it a disqualification for him. So again, I'm a little bit unclear of the rules for that event. I did like it. Visually, it worked better than the balls. And what about the ring? What what was your take on that? And, and what would you be your strategy for that? Goodness. Um, again, early days, and there was very little strategy in bulk because it was one-on-one. Unlike Powerball, we had so many... We'd have we'd talk about the strategy of pr- protecting the pods. So I'm a, I'm a little jury's out on that because it just became a wrestling match for each of them, a sort of ground grappling. It has a place on Gladiators. Whether it'll become a an event like like a signature event like Hang Tar, some of the others from the past, I don't know just yet. And Mike, out of Collision and the ring, which one do you think you would have preferred to play? Which one do you think you would have been better at? Collision I liked because you had the big boys on there. Big guys swinging at giant up there swinging around you know it shows that he can be a big guy and still be athletic still have the upper body strength i thought it was contender friendly i know um who was the first guy was his name miles i i think he was a little bit unlucky but then when finley went out there he showed that it was a contender friendly game which is good because they obviously need to put um scores on the doors can't have a a show where you know, they go into the eliminator nil-nil. Somebody has to score. So visually, that was better. And it is better than the balls, as you says. I mean, uh, and again, you have to, the, the ring has to, you give it time. When I say give it time, I'm not talking about in this series, a couple of series, because these guys now have to go, how do we stop these guys getting to the center? And at the same token, who's ever training up the contenders has to say, how do we get these guys past these guys to get to this? And then the, you see the technical moves start to work out and it looks more technical rather than a scrappy wrestling on the floor sort of game. So give that time. Was there any way that they were going to start this reboot without starting with Duel as the opening event? Great it there. Yeah, it was. I mean, I was, I was, Duel was not my favourite and I was never very good at it, but it, the foot platforms are much closer together. And I did like the way the, they all use the strategy of some of the, got the, the helmets on which are heavier than the, the foam ones that are used for other events. And that destabilizing and taking advantage of that sweet moment whereby you just get your contender off. But, you know, so many of them were across that and coming back from it. And it really made the fight for the gladiator that much more. Not easy wins for them. So I was, I was really impressed. I still like someone just do a nice dismount off the top of the podium. I wanted that. What, what is this one of thoughts? We want that. <laughs> That's just me. It's all those little things that I would add in. Mike, you mentioned about Finley. I thought it was absolutely extraordinary after getting injured as, as he did. I thought, oh, well, there'll be a replacement in the wings who's limbering up. He's going to sweep in. He's only going to have to do like, you know, however many events were left. And then he's got a chance to get into the finals but what did you make of his performance after that point carrying on and even on the eliminator i mean you could clearly see even at the travelator his knee was like buckby all over the place wasn't it finley the, the, the character of finley if you watch it all his performances very very aggressive he goes directly i mean we talked about the duel he wasn't shy coming forward on the duel he threw a few punches there that was a great contest and all the way through you can see he attacked everything he did so it wasn't a surprise when what well, it was a surprise for me when he came back because you know we talked about health and safety and, and all the rest of it and me with my fire brigade head on health and safety you would have thought oh let's get a, let's get a, somebody else in but he came back and what he did was he attacked the eliminator the same way he attacked every single game and i was a little bit disappointed that the hand bike wasn't there but he showed everyone how to do a monkey box did you see his technique on the monkey bars wasn't that superb and at that point miles was catch him back up but as he got on those monkey those monkey bars he was gone and then from that point there was no catching him he attacks everything he attacked the um the travelator he went up there like it was you know it was nothing and the guy's got a bad knee that was his mentality you know and it would be great to see him in the quarterfinals to see how he performs there because whether he's still got that that aggressiveness when you look at miles he was slightly a bit bigger you know he was carrying a bit more body weight so his style was more, not laboured, but more slow, more steady, more... I wanted a bit more from the duel, but I think he had a bit of combination of intimidation by, you know, the big giant standing in front of you like that. And obviously that's giant's game now, isn't it? The duel. And his body weight was too far forward. So as soon as he got hit on the head, he went. You can see when he was doing the, yeah, what's it, two and a half second lead, 
And when he started, he was a bit more slower. He wasn't attacking it. He was just going through the whole thing. So when uh, Finley overtook him, I think that was it. He didn't have that aggressiveness to put the afterburners on and catch up. But no, Finley's uh, performance, I thought his performance all the way through was superb. He would have been a gladiator nightmare for us. Apart from, and this is me now with my technical gladiator head on, Hang Tough. He's the type of person you want on Hang Tough because he's coming straight for you. You don't have to do a lot of work. He came straight for Legend. Legend just waited there as you came up. Just grabbed hold of him and that was it. So there's some games that aggressiveness doesn't work, but mostly it does. I agree. What did you make of Miles and Finley then, our first two male contenders? I think, again, there was sort of the sense of one going all, all out, uh, Finley with his, oh, sadly, for what happened. But I really admire him because I heard it pop. And I know what injuries can feel like on that show. You've got to listen to your body. But they said how much you can sort of blot it out completely and then carry on for the last few events and then him through the eliminator. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Diane. I think it's about time that we introduced another gladiatorial voice onto this very special glad pod. Delighted that Jennifer Stout, a.k.a. Rebel, joins us now. Jenny, what did you make of what you saw on Saturday night? Do you know what? Yeah, we should have been around now, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because... You're missing out on something, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? And, like, I look at it and I think the actual show and the way that they've done it and the, you know, the drama. Yeah, I love it. Love it. But I miss it. We should be there, though. I miss my family. Who were your favourite gladiators? Now, I know that you've got a soft spot for Nitro yeah. and Fire. Them aside, who are your standouts? Who's the young girl, the 20-year-old? She, is it Dynamo? Is it Dynamo? I think? I really liked her. I thought, yeah, I thought she was really good. The person who kind of reminds me of Wolf is going to get himself in so much trouble. So much trouble. I think collectively, I think that once they get a little bit more comfortable with the games, you know, we get, you know, I'm sure that as time went on, when they've done all the rehearsals and that, I think that over a period of time, I think that the audience are going to warm to them. And I think, and I do believe that we do need something like this because we're missing something that everybody can get involved in. And then talk us about Nitro and Fire then, because you know them both. How did you think they both did? I mean, exceptionally well. I think I think that the fact that because they're agile, they're sporty, you know, they're good with the crowd, they understand what's needed. I think they played their part really well. Very, very well. Fire was on Jewel, wasn't she? Yeah. Do you know, the very first time when, um, when after we found out that she was going to become a gladiator, I'm like, Fire, like when you go on to Jewel, you're going to actually feel that you're planted and that you're standing still and you're hitting them and your body's solid. But when you play back, you're going to look like jelly on a plate. <laughs> jelly on a plate. And she's like, exactly that. Exactly that. Wobbling around everywhere. But yeah, no, she handled herself really well. It's a really daunting and it's really one of these things where it's, um, you can only talk about the experience when you're actually doing it, I think. It's one of those things. But I think she handled it really well. She psyched out her component. She knew what she had to do and she um, delivered. Now, Mike, you mentioned a bit earlier on that you got to go to one of the filmings of the show. So how was it? I thought it was a good idea to sort of hand over the... It's not the word. Yeah. Yes. To hand over sort of like, you know, the, the pendulum that... Yeah. And, and it is our legacy. I love the brand Gladiators. Yeah. And we thought, you know, let's hand it over and hopefully it's in good hands. And... When I went up there to collect my ticket, Saracen, yeah, and everyone was like, yo, I look at Saracen and doing nudging, look, he's Saracen. And, and uh, I went with Chrissy, my wife, and we went in and they took us up to the VIP room and Donna Darby was in there. Oh, no way. How you doing? Oh, we had a great time in the VIP room. It was wonderful. Went out on, on the arena to see the show. I had a queue. Yeah, I was signing autographs and taking pictures, but I expected somebody to come up and say oh you can't do that you're interfering with the but they did they loved it they thought it was wonderful I had a front row seat and i sat there and they came up one at a time yeah they were all coming up the the, the riggers were coming up and i don't know who it was but it was part of the production team they said yeah. you know you need to come backstage and you know see the gladiators and give them you know a bit of encouragement not that they needed it but so i went backstage and i went there and i bumped into this guy called paul noddings he was there 
got his camera out. Sarah, we need some pictures, mate. <laughs> but they all came out from wherever they were. Every single one of them. They treated me like I was their dad. It was wonderful. So I, I wanted to ask you about the presenters, Bradley and Barney Walsh. What did you make of their debut? I've always liked Bradley's work. And of course, we met Donna during the time when we were gladiating. Head to cheerleader. <laughs> and gorgeous with it. So the, none of them have ever changed. I don't know. I, I'll be very honest. I was a little ambivalent at first. I think, I don't know if I can speak for yourself, Mike, and for, for mm. you, Jenny. It just, it would have been nice for there to be a nod to each and every single one of us of the originals to do sort of guesty present or commentary or punditry. And I still feel that because I think we all have so much to give in terms of our experiences. It's not bitter chips, but maybe it is. That, it has legs. There's a lovely camaraderie. Of course they're father and son. They look good on camera. Let's see. Let's just see where it goes. Listen, I think, I, I mean, I love, you know, Bradley and his son. I think, I think that they're a fantastic duo. And I think that like with everything, it's, it's just time and it's just um, an understanding of, you know, the crowd warming to them, the next generation of individuals. It's going to be a lot of parents on our age group and that sort of stuff that will be taking their kids and their grandkids to, to see it and to talk about it. So it's almost introducing like another generation into gladiators. But, you know, they present themselves really well. It will be really interesting to watch the rest of the shows to see how everybody gravitate to each other. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be exciting. Yeah, it, it's like when we first started, and I go back all those years, you find Ulrika was intimidated to a degree. Big guys, big muscly men and all the rest of it. So you, you're very tentative and careful of what you say during the interviews. But over the years, when she got to know us, she got to know me, she took the mickey, she teased me, she winded me up, and that's how she was. She was that little wind-up. You know, you go on you go on the duel and you've just lost and you're annoyed. And then Ulrika comes and winds you up with the microphone. Give them time because they need to know who they can wind up and who they can't, you see? And once they get that establishment, you know, all that established, then you see that they'll have more of a rapport with whoever they're interviewing. They'll just bounce off each other. And Jenny, what did you make of the new events, Collision and The the Ring? Wh which one did you prefer or did you like them both? And how would you cope with, with playing both of those events? I like The Ring. I thought, I thought that was really good. It kind of reminded me a bit like a Powerboard stuff. I was only 30 years younger. Listen, when I looked at it, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll be good at that. I really like the setup. I like the, the way of just going against yourself and seeing who's the strongest and the best mindset and that sort of stuff. And I think, you know, we will get more people and I think the show will be a hit. I'm hoping it'll be a hit. The other thing that people were really interested to find out about, no John Anderson, how was the ref going to do? Mark, Plattenberg, Die. what did you make of Mark? I thought the whole refing side, it enforced a, set, a level of feeling quite secure because with the three sets of eyes and then himself being that new voice of the 3 2 one, I just... I thought this is so good because it is a proper nod, but then with a little bit more in terms of the clarity and the security, because you can't go and film an event again if something goes wrong. It's just not what the game show is about. It's that one chance, that one opportunity. And I think the, the level of refing on this was far better. I love John, but, you know, there were things that could easily have been missed, which kind of created the fun, didn't it? A little bit, bit Jenny and Mike, because... Then there'd be the arguments and the controversy. I didn't do that. I mean, you can't go back into the balcony and then look through the footage again. There's no time on the on the shop floor. Yeah, I'm impressed. I was impressed with that. I was very curious to see how it would pan out. I liked him. I thought he was very good. First of all, I talk about the bit with Viper. I think he didn't really know what to do. And then he just said, you're disqualified. But when Viper stood up to him, I thought, Mark's got him, eh? He's a big man, money. What he does that annoys me that what John Anderson does. He interferes in the gauntlet too much. When Athena was doing her thing, Athena would have stopped that girl going through. And he lets her up, lets her up. And you think, no, leave it. Down to the contender to get up and run. You know, it's not down to the gladiator to give somebody a little, hey, let me help you up. You just tripped over and you fell over. Let me help you up. That's not what we're there for. We're there to stop them from getting through the gauntlet, period. So that was my little bugbear that he kept interfering in the gauntlet too much. I didn't like that. But as a referee, I thought he was good. And I think we have to kind of like give him a little bit of a, a respite in terms of like for the referees and stuff. It's the first time of them actually being in that kind of position and trying to read the situation as best as they could do. Because don't forget, 
I mean, by the time, well, I mean, especially for me, by the time I came in, John Anderson already had like three or four years experience. So he could make up his own mind and make up his own rule. In fact, John Anderson was the gladiator. Do you know what I mean? Like he was the man and we had to do what he wanted us to do. So I think it's, I, I think it's all about, you know, TV problems. It's about getting to know the game, getting to know the gladiators, getting to know what they can and cannot get away with. And I think as time goes on, he will put his own personality spin on it as he gets used to the games and gets used to how people respond and how it's supposed to look and not look. I know we, we spoke about Miles and Finley quite a bit, but Jenny, starting with you, what did you make of Kerry and Tasha? What, what stood out from you from both of them and, and who impressed you? And as well, Miles and Finley, what did you make of their performance? Do you know, though, I think that both girls, I think that they were probably very well suited in terms of themselves and they're very gutsy individuals. And I think that that's what you know the show needs. Like we need contestants, we need people like that that are gutsy and pushing their way through and, and believing in themselves and not being afraid to actually go up and be against, um, you know, the gladiators and stuff. And I think, you know, the young guy that got himself injured, I, you know, I, I did feel for him. I think that, you know, when he was, when he was hurt, I thought, oh my God, that's it. He's, he's finished. But his comeback was ridiculous. And I just feel like, um, it's, you know, it's just one of those things. It's just, you just push them through. Yeah. And Jenny, what did you make of the commentator, Guy Mowbray? What did you think of, of his input? You know, bearing in mind that we were so used to the, the dulcet tones of John Sachs. You can't get a better John Sachs, I'm afraid. I think if anything that I thought kind of missed that little bit of an edge and, you know, the conversation skills and that sort of stuff. And like I said, I think it's, you know, he will grow as time goes on. But John Sachs had it down to the absolute bit team. Paul, oh, if you could elaborate a bit, because obviously this is going to be coming out before the next instalment. So next week, we've got the new event, which is The Edge. And we've got two new gladiators, Bionic and Comet. What can we expect from all three of those elements? The Edge is an amazing game. That's kind of like, I would put it up there with kind of like a pendulum type game because it is raised up high off the floor. It's like a lattice grid. The gladiator is on one side, contenders on the other, and the contender has to get back and forward as many times as possible. And the gladiator's mission is to basically get them off the edge, push them off so the gladiators can rugby tackle them, prize them off the edge so there's lots of big falls into the net which is really really good i think it comes across really well on tv as well so that's a really good event to look out for and then bionic he's like six foot six and he is an absolute unit he's a machine so really looking forward to, to him in action and then comet she is the most who's like jet from the original series so she's our elite gymnast the Wall, Hang Tough, all of those games. So really looking forward to finally seeing her in action too. So there you have it, the views of me, Jet, Saracen, Rebel and Producer Paul. But what did you make of the reboot on Saturday night? And what have you made about what we said on this episode about the reboot? Get in touch with us as always by sliding into our DMs on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram or by emailing us on gladpod at gladiatorstv.com. Mike, I'm sure everyone listening is going to agree. What a great GladPod debut. It will be great for you to join us for another GladPod soon. But for now, Mike, thank you very much. Rebel, great to see you again. Thanks, Jet. Thanks, Producer Paul. And for all of you listening, see you again soon. Good competition, good spirit, great sportsmanship as both contenders show mutual respect. Join us again next week for the ultimate challenge, the might of... 